Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, on this particular video, which is another in the series of the RAV4 engine saga, and I've no idea what episode this is going to be, it's beyond the title for you, um, I'm going to show you how to measure the oil clearance on a crankshaft main bearing journal. Now to do this, you're going to need some plastic gauge, okay? Now, I know this isn't the world's most accurate way of measuring this, but it does work. And for my students, at least, this is what we use. Um, there really isn't very much that they can break using this. Um, yeah, so that's why we're using it. So, you know, for anybody at home, if you want to measure some oil clearances on bearings and stuff, plastic gauge is a, is a pretty good way of doing it. It's not the best way of doing it in the industry, but to do it you know, the best way requires a lot more expensive equipment. And this stuff is not expensive, it's pretty cheap actually. And you'll see on the actual um, paper card, and, and, and down there is the plastic gauge, and you'll see that shortly, that little green strip. We've got two scales. We've got a scale on this side in millimeters, and if you flick it round, then we've got a scale in inches. So depending on what part of the world you're from and what scale you use, this works for all of us. Okay, so I'm gonna measure the oil clearance on uh, bearing cap, main bearing cap, or main bearing number one. I've got the cap here. And what you need to do before you start is make sure that everything is really, really clean. You know, get rid of all the, the oil and the debris and make sure that the mating surfaces are nice and clean and that's got a bit of oil on it, so I'll give that a bit of a clean. There we go, look, that's just dribbled down after a break cleaned all the down there, look. So we're all good. And you also need to make sure when you fit the bearing cap that you put it on in the correct orientation. If you look at the end of the cap, you'll see this has got a number one on it. So that means it's number one cap. So it goes uh, nearest the front of the engine. That's where the cam belt is. And uh, it also has cast into it an arrow. So it even tells you which orientation it goes in as well. And that's really important because these caps are matched to this particular block. You can't use this cap in a different block. And the reason for that is they don't bore the hole until these caps are bolted in place. They're all torqued up and then they bore it out. So this cap is unique. And what's really annoying at work is the students tend to swap them around from one block to another and then they're, oh, sir, my crank won't turn. Yeah, I wonder why. Okay, so these caps have to stay with this block. Don't swap caps. Therefore, if you've got an engine with a broken cap, you're probably gonna to need to replace the block because you can't use a cap off a different engine. Most likely, it's not going to work. Hey, it might, but it shouldn't. Or it's unlikely to. Could cause you problems. Okay, so all we need to do now, uh, I've got the crankshaft laid in the block to my side, and um, inside here, I've already opened one up, here's a piece of plastic gauge. There you go, that little green strip. It looks nothing to the camera. It's that little green strip of plastic. And what happens is we lay that on the journal, put the bearing cap on whatever you do don't turn the crankshaft while you're doing this and then we're going to torque the journal down we've got to tidy up in evenly you know you can't just do one side and then the other that's a that's a bad thing so we're going to evenly torque up the bolts until it's torqued down to the 58 newton meter spec uh, and then we're going to under the bolts and very carefully remove the cap and what will have happened um, is the the plastic gauge which we laid on top of the journal before we put the cap on will get squashed and the more it gets squashed it tells us the less of a clearance gap there is between the bearing the shell bearing which is in there that's a shiny white thing and the bearing surface on the crankshaft so the more it gets squashed the less of a clearance imagine it's your finger in there you know if, it's, if there's no clearance your finger's gonna get really really flattened out and squashed and the same thing goes with plastic gauge so uh, here we go, let's see what uh, kind of clearance we've got on this particular journal. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is, sorry about all the rain, it's a really, really windy day today. 
and really rainy day. I'm going to lay the plastic age, and it's really awkward. Let's just get rid of a glove. Okay, so I'm just going to lay the plastic age over that bearing. And this stuff was never designed for mechanics. Our fingers are way too big. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, now we get the bearing cap. Remember, we can't turn the crank, and there's no oil at the moment. This is all built up nice and dry. I'm just going to lay that cap over the top and you've got to try not to shuffle the thing around you know it's got to be put on with extreme care otherwise you're going to get the wrong the wrong reading there's not a lot of room to work with the camera in place but we'll see what we can do there we go notice the number one here look and the arrow pointing forwards towards the, the front of the engine. It's really important you get those caps in the right position. Otherwise, you'll find that most likely your crankshaft won't even rotate. It'll lock up solid. Okay, I'm just going to tweak these up with a normal ratchet for now because we're going to be nowhere near the torque setting. Bringing it down. Nice and evenly. There we go. Cool. Right. Now for the torque wrench. I'm hoping this is going to fit in there. Jeez. Poor camera. Right. So we'll just do them evenly. But either side. Okay, maybe it's 58 newton meters on this particular engine. There we go, it's 58 on that side. Yeah, on that side excellent okay so now the caps in its its normal position as if it was fitted and the engine being built up and now we can just slacken off these bolts again remove the cap very carefully and we're going to measure how wide that flexi gauge has been squashed Looks like the left hand uh, drew the short straw again. No glove. Okay, let's get the bolts out of the way. Now, getting these off, you've got to be really careful because they're, they're usually quite tight because they're, they're almost like an interference fit once they're in place just to locate them perfectly. Very carefully, I'm just going to try and ease that out. There we go, perfect. Okay, what have we got? Well, we can see very clearly on both the shell, which is in the cap, and on the crank, a width. Now, they're both the same width, so let's measure the crank. So we'll measure the flexi gaze resi residue on the crankshaft itself. And if we get the flexi gauge, the wrapper, we can see that that's too small. So you've got, to, you've got to line up which width looks similar. So that's too small. It looks about right. And I would say that that one's too big. So we'll, we'll go with that one. And that gives us an oil clearance of 0 0.05. Okay, let's see what spec is. 
Okay, so we got a, an approximate, and it really is only approximate because you know you're just choosing between a set number of distances, um, four different options basically. So that's the kind of residue that it leaves. You can't really see that roll. There you go. That's the kind of residue that it leaves inside the cap, and that's the scale that you have to use to read it. Which one's that one? Is that one metric? Yes, metric. Okay. <coughs> and Mr. Toyota told us that the specification for oil clearance on journal number one should be between 0 0.015 and 0 0.034. We got 0 0.05, which is slightly bigger than uh, original spec. Yes. But that's okay because there's a wear limit of 0 0.08. So we're still well within the maximum wear limit. And it's not surprising that this engine, the journals have worn a little bit and the shells have worn a little bit too. Because it's done like 250,000 Ks. It's been a long way. It's done a lot of work. And it has been running low on oil a couple of times, I'm sure of that. Okay, so that particular journal is a pass in my book as far as oil clearance is concerned. Um, obviously I've got lots more of those still to check but I just wanted to show you how to do one of them. Okay, if you've got any questions or comments, then please do put them down the bottom and I'll do my very best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then great, welcome aboard. Press the su subscribe button and also click on the little gear and turn on notifications and then that way you'll receive emails as and when any new videos get uploaded. And there's usually around five, sometimes even 10 each week going on the channel at the moment so it's re I'm really really busy and uh, yeah there's lots to watch okay crew well you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel thank you cheers for watching over and out <laughs>